recording now. All right, fantastic. Well, thank you so much everyone for joining me this morning. Um, we're here with the candidates from District 1, which incorporates the areas of Northwestern Colorado Springs, just south of the Air Force Academy. The Independent Center is passionate about civic engagement and we recognize that city council directly impacts the lives of our community members in many ways, including transportation, housing, and infrastructure. This is, these issues are important not only to the disability community, which makes up nearly 20% of the population, but also to those community members who work with, live with, care for, and know individuals within the disability community. The disability community is the largest minority community that anyone at any time can join. For this reason, we are committed to engaging our city council candidates in active discussions around topics that impact the disability community now and in years to come. We will begin by allowing each of the candidates to briefly introduce themselves, and then we'll move into the question and answer segment and close with any final comments from the candidates. We ask in the interest of time that the introductions be limited to around 90 seconds and that the responses of the questions be limited to around 90 seconds. We'll have an alert at 30 seconds, 10 seconds, and then when time is ended. Thank you so much. Everything will be uh, asked and answered in random order. Um, and so with that, we will begin with brief introductions. Um, Mr. Mason, we'll let, you, we'll let you kick us off. Sure, thank you and good morning uh, to everyone. Uh, my name is Jim Mason. I've lived in Colorado Springs for the last 15 years. I've been working as a volunteer at various levels, most importantly with the uh, Colorado Springs School District 11 Board of Education. I'm now in my seventh year, or eighth year actually, because my term is up in November. On the Board of Education, I've served as a president, vice president, and secretary twice. I'm in my second term. Uh, go around as secretary of the board. I'm on the, urban, the Colorado Springs Urban Renewal Authority board for the last five and a half years. And I am chairman of a couple scholarship foundations within the community, both of which have something to do with my fraternity. And I, I'm a member of the African American Youth Leadership Conference, a, a lot of other things. All of this to say, I understand at the grassroots what's going on in Colorado Springs, where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. And I'm running because I wanna be a part of that success and offer my talent and my skills on behalf of my fellow man. And I have a career of service because I spent 30 years in the army. I know nothing else but public service. And I think I'm pretty good at it. Therefore, I'm continuing. And I think that's about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Carlson. Thank you, I appreciate you guys uh, putting this together. I think it's very important for what you're doing, especially you know, representing a, a large portion of our community. Um, and furthermore, being part of the Paralympic and you know, having such a large disabled veteran presence as well. Um, I am a Colorado Springs native. Uh, I have lived here all 37 years of my life growing up down south. Um, I have volunteered and worked and uh, kind of built upon uh, others work all my life here. Um, my wife and I are business owners as well. We have uh, a massage therapy business with multiple locations in town. Uh, we see a lot of disabled folks come through the business and so it's something that we uh, address and, and adapt to every single day. And hopefully they leave better than they came in. Um, and so it's very important to me to, to definitely approach this um, from a business ownership standpoint. But in addition to that, uh, we do have a great deal of work to do here in Colorado Springs with regards to uh, you know, the, the disabled community here. Um, we have been hit with two major lawsuits in the past several years in Colorado Springs, unfortunately. Um, which we're working to rectify, but it's a very challenging environment. Um, and so, you know, we've got approximately 15,000 curb ramps that we need to, uh, uh, to tear out and reinstall to make them more accessible to our disabled community. Uh, that's just one piece of that. And so 
I want to continue on that work as far as the infrastructure and investment goes uh, and make sure that we can, um, you know, accelerate that path uh, to make sure that, um, you know, our city is ADA friendly, um, especially if we're going to hang the Paralympic and disabled veteran community flag on our city. That's um, time. I think it's important. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. So we're going to move into the question and answer segment of our conversations this morning. And we'll just start with talking about Colorado Springs and the long and amazing history that Colorado Springs has with disability civil rights. So Colorado Springs has a long history of disability civil rights advocacy, including the creation of Title II ADA rights. The Americans with Disabilities Act was signed into law by Republican George Walker Bush in 1990. After 30 years, how would you address the barriers that exist for individuals with disabilities in Colorado Springs, given resistance to change from some community members? Mr. Mason, we'll at least start that off. Thank you. There's only one way to promote and help people understand the necessity and the importance of ensuring that every citizen have an equitable and equal opportunity to add to the success of the city. And that's gonna be through communication. And I really believe that one of the major responsibilities and job of a council member is to go out to his or her district, or if you're at large, to the city at large, and advocate and explain. It is thoroughly important that we explain to every one of our citizens where we're being, where we're at and where we're going. You know, sometimes people say, well, that's not who we are. Well, no, what you see is who we are. It may not be what we aspire to be. And I think that's the discussion we have to have. We've done great work in ensuring that our citizens with disabilities are equal partners in this success story, but we have to do more. But the citizens, the common person without a disability will never understand that unless someone comes and say, you know, here's why infrastructure is important. Here's why public transportation is important. We have to ensure that every citizen, regardless of where they're at or where they're in their life or their physical status can get to and from the grocery store, their doctor, whatever. So I believe what we have to do is advocate and explain more. Thank you. Mr. Carlson? Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Um, a couple of things come to mind immediately. Um, I think as humans, we're often guilty of, of passing judgment on something um, or an issue until it happens to us. Um, and I think, I think disabilities is, is certainly an in instance of that. Um, we have customers and I have friends that are, are deaf and blind and, and disabled for other reasons. Um, and so uh, I think it allows you to really experience kind of firsthand some of the challenges that, that, that disabled folks uh, face. So I think that's one part of it. The other part is that, um, as Jim alluded to, it's, it's important to have those voices at the table. As a city council member, it's difficult to be everywhere all the time. And so you kind of have to prioritize, uh, you know, what you really want to focus on. Um, with disabled folks being such a huge part of our community, I believe it's the city councilman's responsibility to stay in touch with that community and organizations around town, such as yourselves, uh, to make sure that you guys have a voice and representation on city council, uh, especially as we continue to make future investments in Colorado Springs on things like infrastructure um, to make sure that we're doing that with, uh, with dis disabled folks in mind. Um, I am a, the president of the board for the Trails and Open Space Coalition. So parks and recreation is a huge, huge talking point for me. Uh, and we have worked over the years to, uh, to make sure that parks are widely accessible by all groups of people to add signage, uh, you know, that's, that can be interpreted um, by, uh, with Braille and things like that. And so it's, uh, um, I think it's a voice, but we can certainly do better. Great, thank you so much for answering those questions. The next question is, what solutions do you propose 
to solve the needs of people who are transit dependent so that they can have access to all areas of the city. Mr. Carlson, would you like to start us off? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, it's, um, you know, public transportation is, is incredibly tricky. Um, it, it's, it's not, uh, I don't think it can be viewed as, as in a traditional business sense um, of a profit center, something that you spend money on and it should be paying for itself. It's an investment in your citizens, in your residents, in your community, in the disabled communities especially. And um, folks with disabilities, they, uh, they face much harder challenges than folks without disabilities. Uh, and so they rely on those services you know, to get to the grocery store, to get to the doctor's office, um, or just to go to the park and you know, um, take a walk or get out of the house, especially with COVID. Uh, you know, to, to maybe if you're in a wheelchair, to be able to use a, an ADA friendly sidewalk to get some fresh air and go visit many of the beautiful things in the city like Garden of the Gods, for example. Um, and so public transportation is something the city is going to have to continue to invest in. Um, and we need to do a better job of researching and understand where we fall short um, and where we're going to invest further. Now it is tricky um, as part of the ADA lawsuit, um, the city has had to uh, had to dip into kind of what they would consider non-traditional funding sources like 2C um, or perhaps even stormwater in the future um, to address some of this. And so there are challenges and I think we need folks on council that understand how to navigate that um, and how to, how to make it beneficial. Thanks so much, Mr. Mason. Well, I'm gonna try not to get overly excited because public transportation, if you know anything, have seen me or heard me or read my website, you understand that that's one of my top three priorities. And it goes hand in hand with infrastructure. There's three basic pillars to a thriving, successful city. Number one is education. Number two is a public transportation system. And number three is safe and security. But they're all intertwined and interwoven to infrastructure. And I think as a city council person, that's what we have to spend time explaining to our citizens, that they're not stovepipes separated. They are all interwoven. Our infrastructure is, the backbone of our infrastructure is our public transportation system. And we have got to get to work on that. Not that anyone preceding us has done anything wrong or have been insufficient. It's just that it's such a huge complex challenge that every single day it has to be in that top three priority. We have to work at it. People must be able, without having a car, get to work, get to doctors, get to grocery stores, or just see family and friends. We cannot do that sufficiently and effectively in this city. That's gotta be fixed immediately. And it's gonna take time. That's why we have to get right to work on it. Public transportation is one of the big three to a quality of life for the citizens of the city. And we have to embrace it as such. I'm out of time, but I could go on and on. <laughs> Thank you so much, I appreciate that. The next question is, what is the role of the city in making housing and public spaces more accessible for people with disabilities? So we'll start off with you, Mr. Mason. Well, that's part of the infrastructure and the maintenance and the sustainment costs of our parks and public space. And it's just not cleaning up the trash and the litter, but it's making it accessible to all people in an equitable not an equal, but an equitable. Equal means you have the authority, you have the right, you have everything to go there. Equity means I can go there and enjoy it on an equitable status with everyone else, which means as Glenn alluded to and spoke of, you need to have right the, the proper uh, reading and the ability for uh, people with sight disabilities to see and to move around in the park or open space. You must have it accessible so that anyone in a wheelchair can enjoy the
the park and open space. It takes money to, uh, to construct the park and open space so that it's accessible, equitable to everyone, regardless of their physical uh, or emotional, mental standing. And that is a quality of life. And, and you know what? Our citizens have earned that. We're not giving anything away. Every one of us have earned that by putting in our sweat, our blood, and our time to help this city thrive and be successful. Everyone contributes in their own way. Everyone should be able to enjoy the city in their own way, as long as it's ethical, morally, and legally proper. And we can do that. But it will take advocacy and it will take everyone understanding that each of us is important and all of us are better than any one of us. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carlson. Yep, thank you. Uh, it's a great question. Um, you know, I'm going to kind of address it uh, in two pieces, if you will. Um, as a business owner with, uh, with ADA friendly facilities, and treating a lot of dis disabled folks, um, it, it's you can see just how just how much of an impact you have by just taking the extra consideration. Um, you know, it, it it can be difficult, especially when you have uh, an older building that's 40, 50 years old, for example, uh, that may not be ADA friendly, and and the building owner needs to make an adjustment uh, or investment rather to to comply with that. And so I think we can do a good job of, of working with business owners. And this goes for uh, not, not just your traditional brick and mortar, but you know, multifamily housing and things like that as well. I think we can do a better job of, of working and pushing as hard as we can to get those folks to make these proper investments uh, so we don't end up with lawsuits on the backside that uh, all of us are trying to pay for. Um, the, the other side of that equation is really the kind of the housing piece of that. And I think we have a huge opportunity with Retool COS to rewrite our, our zoning codes and regulations. And then maybe right after this, our building regulations to make sure that we're making proper investments in the future, in, in, in being disabled, uh, you know, um, compliant with disability requirements. Um, and so I think it's important that the disabled community has a seat at that stakeholder table in Retool COS so that when we design what our city is going to look like over the next 50 years, we have disabled people in mind. And again, I just keep coming back to this. Uh, if we're going to hang the Paralympic and disabled veteran flag on our community, which, we're gladly, which we gladly do and have done for the last many decades, um, this is a no-brainer. We have to do it. Thank you so much, Mr. Carlson. Thank you, Mr. Mason. All right, well, those were my questions. Thank you for those thoughtful responses. Um, just to let the audience know uh, before we kind of close up, all of the candidates uh, were invited to join us. Um, and so you know, Mr. Mason and Mr. Carlson were able to join us this morning, but all candidates were invited. Um, we will now give each of you the opportunity to share any closing remarks with the audience. And we'll, we'll start with you, Mr. Carlson. Yeah, thanks. I, again, I, I really appreciate everybody being here and, and listening to us. Uh, Jim and I have been on many calls together, and I think as far as public transportation and, 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 and working with disabled folks, I think many of you can see that both of us uh, have our heads in the right place and our hearts as far as helping out this community. And so, um, you know, uh, of course, we're running for the same seat, so only one of us can get there, and obviously I would appreciate your vote, but um, I'm also grateful to have a couple of people that really uh, care about Colorado Springs. Uh, being a native, growing up here, and having a lot of folks in the community that helped me out, uh, that helped my single mom out, uh, whether it was getting around town or, or, or watching me after school, um, I'm in debt to Colorado Springs, and uh, I've always kind of thought of it as uh, borrowing Colorado Springs from future generations. And so I think it's my responsibility to make sure I can leave it better than I found it. Uh, I appreciate everybody's time and thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mason. Uh, of course, thank you all. And uh, this is very important. I'm happy for the opportunity to speak with you this morning. All I can say is 
we know what has to be done. And there's been folks that preceded us have put in a lot of work and effort. But our citizens who may have a disability, we've got to understand that they are just as important and they have as much to offer as anyone. But we have to be able to tap into it and leverage it. And one of the ways we do that is by ensuring that our community, our city, allows every single citizen to serve in the manner that best fits them. And the way you do that is to ensure you have three basic things, a secure environment, the best educational institutions around, and a public transportation system so that people can get to and from where they need to get to. And all of this adds to their quality of life, which also ensures that they can perform and contribute at their highest potential. And that's what this discussion is really about. Uh, of course, there's more work to be done. And I think as a council member, my experience over the last 15 years in this city at the grassroots, I think I'm best equipped right now to do that. And as Glenn has requested your vote, you have to decide because you're going to have two outstanding candidates to select from. And you have earned that right to select from the best. And you're looking at the best. It's just that I think I'm the best qualified at the moment. With all due respect to my good friend, Glenn Carlson. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. I truly appreciate you taking the time to speak with us and share your thoughts and ideas around the disability related issues that we spoke about this morning that are really impacting the Colorado Springs community. Um, we'll be posting uh, all of these pieces onto our various social media platforms, and we wish you all the very best in your uh, candidacy and running. So good luck to, to both of you. Thank you so much and have a great rest of the day. And thank you all. Be safe, be well. Thank you. Bye-bye.